Hello, everyone. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. It's good to be with you again. And uh, I'm going to share a little bit about uh, uh, our place in the earth and who we are, what God has made us to be in Christ, and uh, the fullness, the fullness of what God has in mind. As we go, we start out as babes in Christ, but then we move into adulthood. And I know I'm speaking to uh, some adults out there, adulthood in the Lord. And uh, there's some uh, some babies out there too, some young ones. And so uh, it's good to hear what's coming and what uh, God has in line, what he has in store for all of us, and the understanding of 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 our authority in the earth, which uh, is being challenged right now to, in, in the, the day that we're living in, uh, the authority of the church, the body of Christ is being challenged. And so it's time that we begin to uh, speak uh, in, in God's word and reveal what God has in mind, because you can't beat God. You can't, you can't undo God because God is God and that we're joint heirs with him in Jesus Christ. And so uh, I'd like to start out with uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. It says, but we have this treasure in fragile earthly vessels in order that the surpassing greatness of the power may be seen to be God's and not to come from us. In other words, God on purpose put the uh, put His glory in earthly earthen vessels, our bodies. And uh, when you look at uh, our bodies, uh, can compared to the, some of the, the power movements in the world, it, it doesn't look very strong. But He does that on purpose so that He can work through weakness. He can work through any circumstance. God can work. Even in the weakest, God can work. He chooses the the foolish things of the world, the Bible says, to confound. In other words, we're confounders. Confound the wise. Confound those that think that they, they're, they're wise. And so we're going to share a little bit about those things, of what happened the uh, in Christ when he ascended into the heavens. The ascension into the heavens by the Lord Jesus, our King, procures for us authority over the earth realm. In other words, when we're in Christ, we have been raised up with him and made us to sit with him in the heavenly places, far above all powers, all authorities. And, uh, and, and that's what God has given to us. And this authority comes out of his authority that we act as ambassadors of the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors. What is an ambassador? One who rep represents or represents the kingdom, represents what he's, he has authority to move in. In other words, when if, if an ambassador of a, comp a country comes in and has diplomatic relationship with uh, other heads of state or heads of countries, uh, he represents that, that being, as an ambassador, he carries the whole load. He carries all of the the authority of his government that he's representing. He's not representing himself. He's representing his government and where he's coming from. And so we have to remember this when we are moving in Jesus Christ. We're not re 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 representing ourselves. We're representing him. And in him is all the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians 5.20. Now, then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, 
Be ye reconciled to God. In other words, brought back in union with God. Be reconciled. Uh, and he's given to us the ministry of reconciliation, which is calling people back to their original state, which is righteousness in God. We bring the message of reconciliation to the captives of the earth and declare that Jesus defeated all the enemies of mankind. You say, well, what about this enemy and that enemy? What about this? What about that? Jesus has defeated it. It's already done. We have to move in that authority of what, what we have. We are ambassadors too. We are ambassadors from the kingdom of God. And we're here in Christ's stead. In other words, our, we're here doing the work that Jesus did when he was on the earth. Because when he died, he died to give us the life that he has in the resurrection of the, uh, 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 from the dead. And that resurrection means that that's the power that we operate in. The church is the most potent of the do dominion vehicles. The most potent. And Ephesians 2 6 says, He raised us up with him from the dead and enthroned us with him in heavenly realms. Not only do we have authority from someone else, we have authority from the throne that we, we represent. We have authority because we are enthroned with him and in him. How do you feel? Well, it doesn't make any difference. The, the Bible has made us kings and priests unto God. How would you feel if you were a king? How would your, 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 I mean, how would you move in the, in the world if you were, if you had the authority of a king? And you do. And so, uh, who moves through us is called the Holy Spirit. The church has, it has the most potent, in other words, it has the most powerful operation of the heavenly vehicles. The heavenly vehicles, uh, the family is a heavenly vehicle. Uh, work is a heavenly vehicle that he's given to us. But the most powerful one is the body of Christ or the church. Here's a word, Ephesians 1.21, and write this down. It is above all other governments and authority and power and dominion and every title of sovereignty used either in this age or in the age to come. Now, they were, they were talking about the, the age that they were in then, but the age to come is where we're at right now. This is the church's authority. When I talk about the church, I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the body of Christ, you and I. Joint heirs with him. And joint heirs. Joint heirs mean that you're an equal heir with what he did. And when he arose from the dead, you arose from the dead. When he's seated uh, in his heavenly realm that he's to rule from, we sit there with him. And we're ambassadors of that throne. Take it. I could say take it to the bank, but you got to take it more than the bank. <laughs> this gives the church the ultimate authority and the power and dominion. You know, uh, when I heard about uh, some of the stuff that went forward in the Democratic Convention, where uh, they took the, the uh, part of the, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance and they took part of it under God out, some of them did. Some of the, and how dare they do that? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. 
under God, indivisible. It cannot be divided with liberty and justice for all. When did we stop saying that? As a pledge. That's called a pledge of allegiance. When did we leave our allegiance and be and being robbed of our uh, of our estate that God has established for us in this nation? It's time, people, to wake up. It's time to be who you are in Him. I want to read another scripture to you: Ephesians four seven seven through sixteen. But unto every one of us is given grace or uh, the ability or, or favor according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. Those who were in cap- captivity to this world and to their own flesh and to sin and darkness. He led them to be his captive and and gave gifts unto them. Now that he now that he ascended, what is it but he, that he descended first into the lower parts of the earth? That is that he ascended into the place where the unsaved or where the, those that died in their own sin and so forth and so on. He descended. And he that descended is the same also that ascended and took those people that were under bondage and under uh, sin's dominion and gave them his own righteousness. And he, he ascended into the heavens. When he ascended, he took everyone that was uh, captives of sin and he took them there with him. And in the spirit, he took us with him too, even before we were born. Hello. Hallelujah. He that descended is the same that ascended far above all heavens. There's there's different realms of heaven, different realms of power. And we we operate in the third heaven, which gives us absolute authority in God. That's God's. Uh, throne. He that 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 he might fill all things, and this is the the earthly manifestation of authority is given to what we call the fivefold ministry. And these are just not names, but they're power operation. They're just not names of words. Oh yeah, this is uh, Professor So and So, or this is. Uh, the judge so and so, or this is you know the, the the names that we give to certain power groups. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. These are operations of that's in Christ to minister to uh, to the people of the earth. The authorities and they and they operate in heaven and in earth both. When you're teaching uh, under the power of the Holy Spirit, you're teaching from heaven's viewpoint. And uh, people that are listening and, and hearing, even an earthly voice coming ministering a a Holy Spirit operation or teaching, they're getting heaven being moved through an earthen vessel into them. And they are reconciled to that truth. Their spirit is reconciled or brought together with that truth. Man. And they're given what? For the perfecting of the saints. Hello, saints. You're not a football team or you're not... (laughs) have a title like St. George and so forth and so on. It's, it's a realm. It's a realm of glory. It's a realm of being established with him in his righteousness. His righteousness. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, there's work. Hello. There's the work of the ministry. 
the ministry is a work it's a, it's an operation and it and it's given to mankind and uh, if you're a teacher you 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 got an anointing for teaching you have anointing for pastoral you have anointing which gives you God's power to do these things God's power God's ability and you'll be saying things that you never learned in the natural you never learned it but you're speaking as truth that is given to uh, given out by the Holy Spirit that lives inside you. When you're a prophet, you prophesy the things that that is, that has been, and that will be. You prophesy. Out of your mouth comes heaven's operation of the prophetic operation. It's not just oh this this, this is. This is just so and so talking. No, this is not so and so talking. This is the heavenly. This is God talking through a human vessel, like He did Jesus, because we're joint heirs with Him. Therefore, we have a word that is equal with what He gives. Man alive. For the work of the ministry and the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ. How long is it going to go on? Till we all come into the unity of the faith. The unity of the faith. We becoming one. The word comes forth until we come into the unity that is actually the unity that exists between Jesus and the Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and to the knowledge, the knowing. It's just not intellectual perceptions, but the knowledge or the, the intricate, intricate uh, personal knowledge of God, of a son of God. Son of God. The knowledge of the son. In the perfect, when you have a, a perfect knowledge of something you know, that per, that individual, that situation, from a higher level than you've ever you, you've ever dreamed about. To the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man. That includes the ladies too. But we're uh, but we are one with Him unto a perfect or a complete whole or a complete has complete authority or have complete understanding of who he is and what kind of power that exists in all humility. I mean, this is something you don't uh, shine buttons over. It's nothing that you blow smoke through. But this is something that, that, that you come into an understanding of who you are unto a complete person in Christ. Unto the treasure, unto the measure, and this is how far we go, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The fullness of Christ? The fullness of Christ means that everything that Christ is, the fullness, he, you fill right up to the head. Man, I mean, it's hard to comprehend because we've been so used to living in. Uh, far less than what has been purchased for us. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. It's time, church, to grow up. Uh, people, uh, they, they'll... Uh, Every wind of doctrine, every everything that comes along, and so forth and so on, either believing it or rejecting it, but never coming into the knowledge of the truth that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by with every wind of doctrine, by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, 
from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. That means it is, as a member of the body of Christ, he has different operations of different people, and, and as they added to the body, as they added to the body, the body receives it. It's just like uh, your your natural body. It, it when you eat something that uh, like a vitamin uh, that has vitamins in it and different attributes in it, it becomes part of your very uh, it becomes part of your body. What you eat, and you eat to live. If you didn't have food, you'd die. You would die. So food is the most, uh, naturally, is the most powerful thing on the, on the globe because you're not going to go anywhere unless you, you take it in. You take it in in one substance, but it begins to move through your entire system. And it's the same with the Word of God. Uh, I may be speaking to certain people. They may be grasping certain operations of what I'm speaking about that God would speak to them and open their minds to hey, yeah, that's right, that's me, that's me. And others would be receiving it this way, receiving that way, but building who they are in the body of Christ. Whether they're workers with their hands, whether they're workers with their different parts of the intellect, it's all coming in the name of Jesus and by the Holy Spirit. Christ's body, the church, provides the environment in which his com commission to make disciples of all nations. Come on. Now, if we get mixed up in the political agenda, certain nations we wouldn't even think about even bringing Christ, uh, the Lord to. But, but he's given us the promise that we're to preach and minister the gospel to every nation. No one left out. No one left out. And he's given us authority to do that and the power to do it. And so every one of the body of Christ, you're so you're important to God. And yield your members as instruments of righteousness. Yielding your members, yielding your body as a temple of the Holy Spirit. It's time. It's time to be who you are and what God has made you to be. It's time to be uh, a spokesman for heaven and move in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the love of God. Whatsoever a person does in word and in deed, he does it as unto the Lord. Whatsoever. It's time. To, to take a hold of your commission and begin to move in the spirit in which Christ has purchased and given you the, 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 the license and the, the welcoming into his body and to be a power unit in the, in the kingdom of God and to speak in the authority of God and to hear what God is saying to you and, and giving your body as an instrument of righteousness unto him so that he can move throughout every nation of the world and give you favor with wherever he's leading you. There will be favor. There will be some conflicts, but ultimately he gives you power to do what he's told you to do, whatever it is. So... I just wanted to bring these things to you concerning who you are, what God has made us to be, and to begin to move in it, and uh, to not allow uh, any kind of political parties or uh, anyone to rob you of the, of the glory and the operation that God has purchased for you through the blood of Jesus. And so it's been good being with you. And uh, I'm, I'm just so happy to share these things, these glories with you, because you're, you're my brother and sister. And I thank God for you, and I pray for you.
in Jesus' name. Amen.